En el centro de la pampa vive un pimiento. Sol y viento pa' su vida. Sol y viento. Hello, my name is Patrick Barnard. Welcome to the 17th edition of the Pimento Report, the last Pimento Report for 2009 and the first for 2010. Today we're going to present New Year's highlights of all the Pimento reports so far, but first a thank you. In Pimento Report number 11, we used an article by the Le Monde contributor Serge Michel and a now-renowned photograph of two brothers in Iran. That photo is by the Dutch-Canadian photographer Paolo Woods, who is based in Paris. Thank you, Paolo. Paolo Woods and Serge Michel will be bringing out a book about Iran in 2010. Make sure to look for this book. It's called Walk on My Eyes. So now, without further ado, goodbye to 2009, hello to 2010, and here's some highlights of the Pimento Report so far. I think that we are really, as people who are committed to open spaces, really radicals because we're trying to get to the roots of our humanity. We're trying to become revolutionaries to reclaim our humanity as every single force kind of conspires to vie for every piece of green on earth. It's every bit as important as, as our architectural heritage, more important in fact, because we're now globally in a biodiversity crisis. We're now in the world's sixth extinction. And everywhere, uh, the people of the planet have to get on board to do what is necessary in their own backyards, to contribute to preserving the the, the integrity, the biological integrity of the Earth's living skin. Well, rail transport has a smaller carbon footprint than most any um, surface uh, transport, with the possible exception of marine transport. And uh, it's three times as more uh, as efficient as uh, cars or trucks. C'est une idée qui nous est venue de, faire, de protéger 12% du territoire de l'érablière à Carrier, euh, une mosaïque d'habitat qui serait reliée soit par des cours d'eau, par des forêts ou par des milieux mines, et puis qui formerait un genre de ceinture verte autour et à l'intérieur de Montréal. If all this continues, if our water is contaminated, water table has fallen, if our food supply is contaminated with hormones, antibiotics, antimicrobial resistance, cancer, all these things are happening. I think time has come that people took this matter in their own hands. Loop the loose. And we just walked into it, 1915. Still not wearing helmets. Can you believe that? And whoosht, we get the whistle. Whoosht, and it's everybody up the ladder over the top into this really gooey, thick stuff. Just gluck. Sucks the boots off you, gluck. I'm really sinking down this stuff because gluck. I'm part of a three man machine gun squad, gluck. Well, one guy carrying the ammo, another guy on the tripod, and me, I'm stuck with the goddamn machine gun. Swing, swing, swing. He's dodging the shells, I like Charlie Chaplin. Synthetic Turf Council, which represents the industry, the turf industry, has been saying that lead can, uh, while it's in there, they admit that there, there is lead in the granules and also in the uh, fibers. They've been saying that the lead cannot get into the body, it's too uh, tightly bound in there. Um, and they have theoretical reasons for that, but what we found is that the lead in both the granules and in the fibers can be absorbed in digestive fluids. 
the fundamental mechanism is actually uh, deeply rooted within the system. And until we change the rules of that system, we're going to experience and re-experience crises just like this every few years uh, forever. If I was to look around the world right now, I would not see any tourism that I would call truly sustainable. From a social justice perspective, from a, an environmental resource use perspective, I think whatever tourism we're looking at at the moment can be made more sustainable. They didn't really have quite the information that they would need. So they really did feel when the first planes went over, the first American planes, they really did think that they were finally being liberated from the terror in which they were living. Uh, but of course they were not. So yes, indeed, they were comparing it with the Russians, but it was compared in a much less favorable way. These people were even worse than the Russians. There's been a lot that's happened within the country in the last month underneath an atmosphere of tense hiatus. Human rights organizations estimate that 2,000 people have been arrested and it's impossible to know exactly how many people have died. Borzu Daragahi has reported for the LA Times that Iran's Revolutionary Guard has publicly said that it had to take control of the country, acknowledging that, quote, leaders are at odds, unquote. For me, one contrast stands out. It's the picture in the Paris Daily newspaper Le Monde, part of an article by Serge Michel. The headline of that article reads, A member of the Basij militia? He might have to hit his brother. Serge Michel visited two young brothers in a Tehran family, one a government supporter in the militia, the other a brother who supports reform and is a student of music. The militia brother went to Tehran University the night that five students died, and when he came out, a colleague was hit and killed by a car that ran into him. The two brothers are the two faces of Iran summer of 2009. Sorab Arabi's mother addresses Tehran City Council. Now, I just want to know why my son has passed away. Is it simply for the vote he'd cast? Assassinated by whom? And by whose order and why? My son was just thinking who he would vote for and then asking, where has my vote gone? He asked for nothing more. He was just killed because he was a supporter of Mr. Musavi. For what kind of crime was he killed? My son was just a 19-year-old boy. He hadn't yet reached any of his wishes. I, his mother, day and night, I am asking God to put an end to this oppression. Si l'échangeur turco, par exemple, est refait tel que le ministère des Transports le prévoit, c'est un désastre euh, attendu prévu, on sait à peu près ce que ça va donner. Si on fait un boulevard, une autoroute urbaine avec la rue Notre-Dame, comme le prévoit aussi le ministère des Transports, euh, il va falloir le, le, la détruire d'ici quelques années. Si on laisse le promoteur Devimco euh, faire du Griffin Town ce qu'il a prévu de faire, il va falloir détruire. Euh, probablement dans, 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 dans 20 ou 30 ans, on va se rendre compte que c'est un monstre qu'on a créé là. Je pense que je parlerai de l'échangeur turco comme le symbole de la manière dont on va se déplacer à Montréal et au Québec euh, dans un contexte de 21e siècle. Comment on veut évoluer en termes de transport à Montréal et au Québec pour le prochain siècle? We're obsessed with developing buildings. Building, building, immobilier, that's it, that's all. Don't talk to me about anything else. Cram it up against the escarpment, put, it, put the highway and the new buildings in a sort of a cuvette in a, in a valley and then pollute the area and make life miserable for everybody for the cost of the dollar. It's unbelievable. I, I, to me, it, it, it's, the whole project is uh, grown out of greed proportions. You know, it's greed behind it. I don't know who's greed, but there's greed behind it. Those are our highlights from 2009. Happy New Year, everyone. This is Patrick Barnard for the Pimento Report. <laughs>